You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Okay, so so what I'm curious to hear about then is how MachineFi kind of fits in with how you all view IoT now, and kind of like the status quo of the industry, and how that, when then you start thinking about Web3, plays mm-hmm. into where IoT potentially can go or what this kind of unlocks for, for the industry as a whole. Yeah, I, I do think this economic layer, like the uh, machine fly, basically where I built is the last missing piece for IoT to fly, right? Okay. So in the past few years, we have lots of progress in sensor technology, in chips, in hardware right. manufacturing, in 5G, you know, you name it. But I think still like the economic layer is missing here. Like who's putting in the incentives for people, for developers, for IoT hackers, you know, to to just launch your stuff and grow their stuff, right? I think that's kind of like a big missing piece right now. I think what we're doing is trying to connect in those IoT company developers and community to the entire crypto world, like the Web3, even token developers, right? Who's very specialized in design those incentives. And if they can do this in the Web3 space, Definitely, like they can give like a 10x, 100x to those device companies in the IoT yeah. world. And so, I, I guess what I'd like to hear a little bit about is if you could, we've talked about the scooter kind of idea. Talk mm-hmm. about some other examples. Like, what has actually on your end, yeah. what have you rolled out? Where, where do things stand as far as what are some applications that people could maybe Definitely. put, connect this all together to understand at a basic level how it works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me give you like a few kind of success stories we have, right? Um, so I think one thing is we have this GPS tracker, like we, we did in-house, it's just try to prove and validate the market. Mm-hmm. It's a GPS tracker plus other 16 sensors, basically track like the movement and location, everything um, for for like an object. So we put this one on Cross Supply, which is a Kickstarter for like hardware, like a few months ago, and we did an A-B test. So okay. if we go with the machine file, with the token, with the incentives, we can see like 10x compared to our traditional like a GPS tracker just put on there, right? So that means the incentive theory does work. So this okay. is all the problem. And then, so we actually finished this 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 device like a, a few weeks back and launched this one, uh, you know, recently. So there are already two teams working on like a, you know, very interesting like a token project trying to even, um, will promote like sales of this GPS tracker further. So one is this thing called like a health blocks. It's basically like a kind of fitness to earn, right? So if you walk uh-huh. 10 steps every day, you want, uh, you earn some sort of token. And, you know, if you, you know, maybe, maybe play basketball with your friends, you know, for a certain amount of time, you're also earning token. So it's a very interesting project. Why this can happen on IOTAX? Because we have the full stack, you know, from like a tracking device to mm. the layer two protocol, which we call TrueStream, processing all the data without compromising privacy, and to the layer one blockchain smart contract, basically to earn the token back to the to the to the to the owner of the device. And yeah. what is the what is the value of the token for the individual? Yeah, the value of the token for individual is, of course, like the, the value carries some sort of like a spe- uh, speculative value as well as like a real value. Okay. Right. In the short term, uh, I think uh, maybe spe- speculative value accounts for like 80 percent because everyone expects this network, machine network, will grow. So they are right. actually holding a token. And in the long run, once we have like enough data points, you know, from people who's doing fitness, those kind of things become very valuable by itself. For example, like you can have this data kind of rent out to research institutions, uh, mm-hmm. of course, like without compromised users' privacy. You can have the data actually even you know, share with other people, for example, like a Michael Jordan, right? So his fitness like data would be very interesting uh, to people who wants to collect or like to his fans, for example. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of design space over there. So when it comes to kind of this, you know, being able to prove that the person who's receiving the incentive um, is actually the one utilizing the device, how is that kind of handled? And I'm curious what kind of problems that could have calls. And what I'm kind of getting at is there's obviously the risk of kind of spoofing mm-hmm. um, by, you know, let's say you're, you have a fitness tracker and your insurance is going to bring down the cost if you walk X number of steps. So your tracker is tracking the steps, but you're not going to go walk. So you give it to your fr- friend of yours who is very active and goes for runs every day and they give it back to you. How is that kind of situation handled, protected against, or just, just what is your view on the kind of that spoofing side when you get to proof of anything type of uh, atmosphere? 
great, great question. I think there are usually like two ways to to basically fight against with the spoofing, right? So I think one is of course you do some very hard tech on the on the sensor. Uh, for mm -hmm. example, for the sensor we have, we have like a secure chip over there, meaning like the moment the sensor collects all the information or data, like the data gets signed by the secure chip, like no one can tap it in the middle. So that's kind of like a hardcore approach to make it happen, which we use okay. for now. Another one is more like a game theoretic approach. So basically says if you know you're 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 cheating, right? Someone else will try to find the signal, like the proof you're cheating, and trying to basically um, like a tell the protocol like you're cheating and trying to win the reward back. Uh, and okay. if the protocol finds you're cheating, you're getting like a slash or in a way. Okay. Uh, I think this is like a more long-term goal. So there are some game theoretic gotcha. things you should design. Yeah, over time. 